and all that is within me. I'm going to bless his name and I'm going to praise him. I saw some people coming in today and your spirits are heavy. The devil has a little bit better hold on you than he usually gets to have on a Sunday. You should realize that that's a sign that the devil is reminding you how bad he wants you. He brings things to your mind that should not be on your mind right now. But it is so critical that we understand that as people of God, when we come into God's house, that we're seeking God's face, that it's the same way it is when you're talking with somebody, you got a bad connection. Satan is that static. Sometimes when your computer's not going right, you got to come out of the program and come back in. Sometimes you have to reboot the whole system because something's got a hold to it. I want you to know it is with that spirit that this message was prepared. You look at your bulletin and you see what the title of the message is. It's not one of those sermons where you got to get two thirds through the sermon and then find out what the title is. No, we're talking about you are more powerful than you realize. You are more powerful than you realize. I want to read the scripture that Minister Jones read again, but I want to read it from a different translation. It's a translation called The Voice. And this is what it reads. Jesus says, listen, disciples. If people give you a hearing, they give me a hearing. If they reject you, they're rejecting me. And if they reject me, they're rejecting the one who sent me. So go now. When the 72 completed their mission and returned to report their experience, they were elated. They were excited. They said, it's amazing, Lord. When we use your name, the thing that is did what we say. Jesus looked at him and said, I know. I saw Satan falling from above like a lightning bolt. I've given you true authority. You can smash vipers and scorpions under your feet. You can walk all over the power of the enemy. You can't be harmed. Yeah. But listen, that's not the point. Don't be elated that the evil spirits leave you when you say leave. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. It's the word of God for the people of God. So again, I want you to think on the thought that you are more powerful than you realize. There is nothing that will ever be able to change the fact that a Christian's greatest glory comes not from anything they might have done, but from what God has already done for them through his son Jesus. One of the things that he has done for us, my brothers and sisters, through his son Jesus Christ, is to give us total victory. Did you hear me? Total victory. Not just victory, total victory. When you run a tab, there, there can be a subtotal, but when it gets down to the bottom, it says total. And that means everything. He has given us total victory through the cross of Christ to fight and win. Amen. Fight and win. Yes. The spiritual battle that takes place against us 
daily. Do not think the devil only messes with you on Sunday. Right. They will mess with you 24-7, 367. He said, Pastor, there's only 365, but he didn't want you to there's only 367. Well, he messes with you 367 because he wants you to know that he's always messing with you. The battles are being waged today as though the 70 who return with the joy that at your name, the demons are subject to us. Can you imagine what an eye-opening experience that is for the disciples to discover that even the demons were subjected to them in Jesus' name? What does it mean to be subject to? I want you to know that that is a, 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 a Greek term and in the military language, it's likened to a group of soldiers snapping to attention and following precisely the orders of their commanding officer. To show you subject, that means that you are going to follow the orders. The demons were subject to the 70 disciples because of the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus had delegated his authority to them to speak on his behalf. Satan's power had been broken by the power of Jesus Christ. And it was this very power that Jesus gave to the 70. You know, I remember when I was in uniform and they would tell me to do something. I said, all I need is a per person. And they said, per person, what is that? I said, tell, I said, per Colonel Johnson that I'm supposed to do so and so and so. That way, if they ever came and questioned me, why do you know what you're doing? Because Colonel Johnson told me to do it. Mm -hmm. If you got a problem with it, go see Colonel Johnson. All right. I'm just following orders. All right. Jesus is saying that very same thing that the disciples are saying, I give you authority. Yes. If anybody comes to you, then you tell them it was me. If you remember, he did that on his, when he began to have his trial for entering to Jerusalem. What did he tell the disciples? Go find this coat. And when they ask you what you're doing with this coat, tell them the master has need of it. That's right. That's right. The scripture said that he told them that, and what did they do? They walked away with the coat. The demons are subjected to the power of Jesus. The thing to note that in this divine power authority was given to flawed, sinful human beings. Perhaps this is why the disciples returned but just maybe just a little too happy with what they did in Jesus' name. For you see, it's not so much what God had done through them in Jesus' name, but what they thought they were doing because they were using Jesus' name. These disciples probably suffered under the same misconception that blinds many Christians today. We see God and his kingdom on one side and Satan and his kingdom on the other side. And it's like they would, we would see in the military, you have an offense and a defense. Yeah. That they may have the notion that it's us versus them. One of the things that they didn't realize was that, or that they did realize that both kingdoms have power. Do not downplay Satan. Do not play him cheap. He is powerful. Okay? Or at least he's more powerful than us. You remember in that in that little joke that the that the uh, when the two men were running in the forest and the bear was running after them and the other man says you can't outrun the bear. He said I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. Don't play with Satan. Because you need to know Satan ain't playing with you. He's coming after you with everything he has. He has you thinking he's playing with you. But you need to know what his, his total goal is, his ulterior motive is, is to keep you from getting what God wants you to have. So I want you to realize that it is not, when we talk about offense and defense, it's not like a tug of war. But you see, when we say tug of war, then, then people think that you're on even plane and you got one on the left side and one on the right side. What I mean by tug of war, tug of war 
is that on some days God seems to be winning, and on other days the devil appears to be winning. We may get frustrated because we don't seem to have anything to say about who wins the battle. But I want you to look at the disciples. Despite the battle that they came back from, they came back from their mission with a new perspective. And it was a true perspective. Because of the authority given to them by Jesus, they noticed that it wasn't really a tug of war after all. You see, spiritual authority is not a concept of tug of war on a horizontal plane. I want you to understand that it is a spiritual battle of pulling and tugging back and forth to try to keep Satan from winning. You think of spiritual warfare more as a vertical chain rather than a horizontal chain. In other words, if you look at the cross, when you look at the cross, this part is level. But if you look at this part, it's not level. Which means that what is on top is on top. And what's on bottom is on bottom. If we look at this in the realm of the top to bottom, Jesus is at the top. When we look at Matthew 28, came, Jesus came and told the disciples, I have been given complete authority in heaven and in earth. Now because Jesus is at the top, then he has given us his authority and power to be his servants, to exercise his authority and power in his name. And because Jesus is at the top, that means that we are not only underneath him, but under every, everything else. All things include Satan and the demons, which means Satan and the demons are technically under us. But he has done such a wonderful job of making us think that it's a tug of war. And it's not. You are beneath me. Is that not the part of the problem we're having now with the white folk in this country, that you still got some white folk that think black folk are beneath them? And we say, you and them a lot. I am not beneath you. You also need to realize you are not over me. Our good news is that when we are under God, that that must mean that we cannot be any, that there cannot be anything or anything else between us and God. Let me say that again. There's nothing between us and God. We come under direct authority of God. This means that Satan and his demons are below us. In other words, they are at the bottom. And Satan is subject to the authority Christ has invested in us. Why then, if that is the case, does the kingdom of darkness still exert such negative influence in the world and in the lives of Christians? In one word. It's a lie. It's a lie. It is amazing how many people live their lives on a lie. Come on. A lie. Whatever that lie is. It's one lie for somebody else, it's another lie for somebody else, it's another lie for somebody else. But when you find out, it's still a lie. Amen. You need to know that a half truth is still a whole lie. Amen. Come on. And that is what Satan has done to the church of Jesus Christ, it has lied to the church. The only thing worse than being lied to is believing the lie that you were told. And that's what the church has done. You need to know that Satan is not equal power with God. Come on, man. He is a conquered foe. But if he can deceive you into believing his lies, then he has more power and authority than you do. And you live as if he does. In other words, don't you know the devil can't make you do anything you don't want to do? Come on, man. Right. You have to give the devil authority to tell you what to do. Right. And this is the worst part, to tell you what you can't do. Come on. If the devil tells you you can't do it, you begin to believe it. 
And the devil will do anything to do that. He'll tell you you can't do it. And do you know what happened? He'll, he'll make that so strong that he'll even get other people. Have you ever? Well, let me say it this way. Do you know that we can talk ourselves? Not only can we talk ourselves out of anything, you already got that far, far down. But don't you know we can also talk ourselves into it? As well. One of the things that Paul is always telling me, she said, you can talk yourself into anything. If you want to do it, you're going to talk yourself until you find a way to do it. I want you to know, Claudia, after 22 years, you don't say that as much. <laughs> See, I'm glad you believe what you believe. I'm glad you talk like you talk. But see, Satan will make you think that you can't do what God has told you you can't do. God has told you, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You know what the devil say? Then why ain't you doing it? I bet you can. I love the people who say, I love for people to tell me that I can't do something. I love nothing better than to make them a lie. <coughs> Satan does not have equal power with God. We have to remember that. He is a conquered foe. I didn't say will be conquered. I said he's already conquered. Did you hear what Jesus told his disciples? I saw Satan cast out of heaven. I was there. I saw it. Not only was he cast out, but it was him and one part of his cronies. They were all thrown out. Why? Because they tried to be God. And God said to them, when I'm born, and then he said to us, there's only one king queen in this house. Well, you can no longer do what I tell you to do. You need to go. Amen. So Satan couldn't be God in heaven, so he decided to become God in earth. But even that's a lie. If Satan can deceive you into believing his lies, then he has more power and authority than you do. And you will live as if he does. I don't know if you remember any encounter that you may have had in school or in your neighborhood when you were growing up. And somebody tried to intimidate you. Somebody tried to tell you you couldn't do something. Some of you may have heard this story before, but it may have I remember when I was in the fourth, fourth or fifth grade. And I had to go the same route to go to school every day. And I went this route, and it was this dude named Juba. <laughs> And Junebug was a bully. Okay? And Junebug every day would get my milk and cookie money. He'd take my money. And he did that for maybe a couple of weeks, maybe even a month. But the day came. When I woke up that morning and I had milk and cookie all in my throat. <laughs> and I decided I wanted my milk and cookie. <laughs> and I went that same rock. And there was Juba. Juba looked at me and thought he said, all right, you know. And I just, and this one, I looked at Juba. <laughs> No, this one out wants a little cookie. <laughs> when that tray come around, I want to get my sugar cookie and my chocolate milk like the rest of my classmates. <laughs> now, I ain't going to tell you that I whooped you up. I ain't going to tell you that. What I will tell you is I got some milk and cookie in there. <laughs> And I got milk and cookie the rest of that school year. Because when Drew Bug saw me, he knew he'd be in for a fight. So he had to decide whether or not he wanted to fight or not. And it was many a day that I enjoyed milk and cookie. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that the great thing about what Jesus has done for us 
and that he has made it possible for us to beat the devil Amen. and get out of the cool. We can give an authority over the devil, over the kingdom of darkness, but if you don't believe it and you don't exercise it, then it says, if you don't have it in the first place. The Greek word used for authority in verse 19 was, was purposely chosen to prove to us that we have the right to exercise and use God's power. Yeah. This is not a statement to say that all we have to do is just access the uh, God's power by implying that God is authorized to distribute it. But we can use God's power because God has told us we can and God has shown us how to use it. The authority God gives to us is the right to rule based on our position. You have the authority to do the will of God because you have your position in Christ. That's what Jesus meant when he said to the disciples, don't get excited because the devil will bear what you say. Get excited because you're a child of God. Get excited because your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Don't you know that when you realize your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life and there's other things that come with that. We need to realize that it is an authority that you can never have independent of God. That is one of the biggest problems that we have as the church of Jesus Christ. It's even one of the biggest problems we have as God's story is we think we can do it without God. And God says you can't do that. It's my power. It's my authority that's been given to you through my son, Jesus Christ. So if you don't get excited, get excited because you're my child. Get excited because when you're my child, there are things that come to you. Those of us that are parents here, remember, there were things that our kids didn't have to ask for. You got them because of your position. What was your position? Use my child. Use my child. And being my child, you get this. I think we need what we need to do. It's just once and for all, we need to go back and start over. We need to start over by making a conscious effort to take our enemy seriously. See, Satan fell from the sky like lightning, and we've been at war with the adversary. There's never been a moment that we could call peacetime in the Christian world. However, we must understand that it is Satan's consuming desire to destroy God's work, which is our lives, which is our witness and our ministry. He wants us, he even wants to destroy us. Remember what the scripture says? He's like a roving lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan will do whatever he has to do to get us from using the authority that God has given us. He wants to deprive God of his glory and keep us where we are. Amen. There are too many Christians that are weak and are not willing to do what it takes to become strong. Amen. Satan has you thinking that it's too hard. Amen. One of the things that they would say, you know, education is so expensive. If you think education is expensive, then try ignorance. God sent his son to live our life and to die our death so that we could have the power to be his children. Amen. Satan wants to keep us powerless. And when he keeps us powerless, then we don't live to the glory of God. Amen. Because we're spending our time saying what we can't do. Yes. And we are so good at saying what we can't do that we believe it. And if we say it strong enough, we get other people to believe it. Now, you know the danger of that? Is that birds of a father will flock together. Miserable people will hang out with miserable people. Amen. And miserable people will talk about people who are trying not to be miserable. Yeah. Let me put it in a vernacular that you can understand. I tell people, you never, when, when you get haters, know that your haters are not people who do it more than you. Let me say that again. Your haters are not people who do it more than you. Yeah. Your haters are people who do it less than you. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that got time to watch you. Mm -hmm. 
See, a productive person doesn't have time to sit up and watch people who are particularly not being productive. If you ain't doing that, they ain't got time to watch you. They're doing other stuff. There was a TV show in the 70s called Bewitched. And there was a lady there named Mrs. Kratz. And Mrs. Kratz could tell the lady everything she and her husband did. Because Mrs. Kratz didn't work. Mrs. Kratz was home all day. Something happened and she looked through the window. And she brought to the point. But see, if you at work, then you can't see what's going on at somebody else's house. And so what the devil does is he gets you focusing on other stuff. Amen. And the other stuff is you talking about people who ain't doing nothing. Amen. This is one reason why I tell people you need to realize in the church we got two G's in the church. We got gossip and we got gospel. Mm -hmm. We got people who are far more experienced in gossip mm -hmm. than gospel. Amen. When we tell you what when we can't go out and tell the world what Jesus said, you ain't got nothing to go out and tell the world. I don't know the Bible, I can't see it. Right? But you go out and girl, did you see so-and-so today? She had a so-and-so, something, something, and she said, I can't even remember all of that. Amen. But you can't remember what the Lord said. Amen. Now that's exactly what the devil is doing with you. He's making you focus on what you don't need to focus on. We call it majoring in minors. Do you think it matters that somebody know what color hair your was that something? Amen. I need to get something that's going to take me through the week. Because the devil won't be messing with me, not tomorrow. The devil will be messing with me from the time the condition is given to the time I get to my car. The devil will be messing with me. What did you say, Reverend? I woke up a little aggravated. No, I woke up aggravated. <laughs> The devil will keep you aggravated. He will keep you focusing on things that you don't need to be focusing on. So he gets you to a mindset to where you don't realize who you are. So you don't focus on whose you are. You need to realize that you have the power to make Satan flee and to make devils and the devil tremble before God. God, through the precious name of Jesus Christ, has given us his authority to use his power to the fullest, to bring him the highest glory possible. Are you aware that you're at the point to where you can tell the devil what to do? The devil won't always have to dictate to you what's going on. Jesus Christ is name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus to which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We have that authority. We have the power to resist the devil and make him flee. Yeah. You have the authority, this is Luke 10, 19 said, over all powers of the enemy. Amen. Amen. You know, that was one of the things that makes the U.S. military so doggone arrogant. I'll say it. <laughs> Confident and arrogant. Because we go into battle believing we're going to whoop you behind. If you remember what happened on 9-11 in 2001, it was captain that said, you don't woke up the bad. Because if we said, no, we don't know who did it yet, but we're going to find out who did it, and we're going after it. Do you know that we have that same authority as the children of God? You get to tell the devil where to go. Wasn't it Forget the sitcom, but they would uh, they would get into the conversation, and when they had nothing, they yeah! <laughs> talk to the hand, talk to the hand, huh? Martin. 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 Okay, thank you. <laughs> we have the authority to not only tell the devil talk to the hand, talk to God, because I'm operating under His authority. God is my per person. God is the one who has told me what I can do, what I can't do, and what I should do. Not you. Again, we have people that are listening too much to other people and not listening to the God who saved you. Stay focused. 
spiritual warfare is vertical, just like the chain of command in the military is vertical. God is above all. God is the commanding officer. God is at the top. And he does not relinquish that authority. We have the power to resist the devil. But our problem is we don't. We have to remember that there is nothing between us and God but us. Amen. So if there's nothing between us and God, and we're the ones that's not doing it, and God has given the authority, and we know God is not an Indian giver, then why are we not doing what God has told us we can do? Because we believe in a lie. Underneath us, my brothers and sisters, as I close, is the kingdom of Satan. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. The kingdom of Satan is under us. It's under us because Satan is always subject to the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Since Jesus Christ has given us authority, Satan is subject to us as well because we have the power that Jesus Christ has given us. I don't know if you realize it, but this year is our seventh year together. I get to start my seventh year as pastor of God's I want you to know that I'm as excited in year seven as I was in year one. And I talked to my colleagues, and they said, how can you still be excited after six years of pastoring the same folk? And I said, because I recognize whose folks they are. Amen. That God's folk. And God is doing something new every day. Amen. I'm excited that I get to see God do it. Amen. Why? Because I realize that I am more powerful than I realize. And you need to know that that's pretty powerful. Because I already believe that I ain't no punk in God. I wake up every morning and when the devil sees my eyes open and my feet touch the floor, I want you to know the devil said, oh shoot. He's ugly. <laughs> and because I wake up with that attitude, I wake up with that. Come on. What you got? Come on, bring it on. Bring it on. I ain't saying he ain't gonna get no mix in. I'm saying he's gonna be like Jim Bug. He gonna know he's been in a fight. And he gotta decide whether or not he wanna fight today. Or whether he wanna go mess with a Christian who he know ain't doing nothing, ain't talking about nothing, don't believe that they say it. Eric is just too much work. That same power is available to you. You need to know that. That enables me to walk the way I walk, to talk the way I talk. Periodically, I have people say, he really believes what he say, don't he? I thank God there's enough people saying, yes, he do. <laughs> yes, he do. I ain't got no better sense to believe that if God said I can do it, but the years that I can follow God, I believe I can do it. I don't believe I can just fly, I can swim, run, do whatever I need to do, because I'm a child. Uh, it is not in my strength, but it's in his strength. Yeah. It's in his strength. What is available to me is available to everyone else. Yeah. I tell people, I am not God's most favorite child. I'm not saying I'm his only favorite child. However, I will tell you I'm one of his favorite children. Yeah. When people ask me, well, who do you think you are? I say, you don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you who my daddy is. Let me tell you what I'm capable of through him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if they do one of two things, either they back down and leave me alone all together, or they know they got a bite on their hands. Yeah. And I trust Jesus. Yeah. I trust Jesus. Amen. I believe Jesus. Amen. And all the time that I found him, he's never failed yes. me yet. Yes. 
He's given me all power and authority under Him. So when I, when it comes to being a child of God, I tell people what Muhammad Ali would say. I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. And it ain't bragging if you can back it up. And everything God says, God can back up through his son, Jesus Christ. So remember, you are more powerful that you realize. Amen. 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 There may be somebody here who say, you know, that sure sounds good. I sure would like to have some of that power. How do I get it? You get it by, first of all, accepting in your heart that you are sinner and that you need Jesus Christ to pay for your sins. Amen. Then the next thing you need to do is to get up out of your seat and come forward and give Christ your hand and your heart. Now why do we have you do that? Because Jesus came from heaven, gave his life for us. He's asking for our hand and our heart. If he came that far from heaven, and it took him 42 generations to get here, I would like to think you could come a couple of feet to give your life to Jesus. Now, I can tell you, that is the best move that you will make in your life. Let me also tell you that that is the one move that Satan does not want you to make. Because he knows that once you accept God, once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that means he no longer has power over you. And have you seen people that have power give up power? No, they don't give it up. You got to take it. You got to take it. So the devil will be messing with you right now while I'm talking. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, I already know the devil in your head. He said, Look, don't listen to that man. You don't really need Jesus like he said you do. You find just like you are. Now remember what I told you in the sermon. It's a lie. It's a lie. If he gives you believe the lie, he won't keep telling that lie. But if you accept Jesus, Jesus will reveal that lie to you and will give you power. Like Georgia power ain't never seen. There is no solar panel system that can give you the kind of power that Jesus has already given you. It's already in you. You just ain't built the switch. The devil's made sure you can't find the switch. Because you know what you did to this whole thing. So we extend to you the invitation in our physical sanctuary and our vertical sanctuary. Anybody who doesn't know Jesus Christ in the heart of his hands. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. And if you're wondering what category you're in, let me help you. You are whosoever. You are whosoever. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you haven't done. You need to know that there is no sin that you have done that God cannot forgive you for. It is at this time you need to listen to Jesus more than anybody else. Amen. Because as you stand and as you contemplate, I can already tell you the conversation <laughs> that Satan is having with you. You done done too much. You know, they told you, if you go to church, you're going to bust the church wide open. <laughs> well, you know, you see, we're still here. We can stand it. What you can't stand is to be without Jesus. Don't get intimidated that, it's, that we have one come up. We don't have a quarter. 
we will take as many as Jesus will send us. I want you to know that this is one of the few churches where we have, we, we realize we don't get to choose who gets saved and who don't. That's between God. That's the Holy Spirit's job. We told God, you send them to us, we're going to love them. You send them to us, we're going to take care of them. You send them to us, we're going to bring them up in your world. Will there be enough? Will there be enough? Will there be enough?
to nurture her, to protect her, to lead her and guide her, oh God, in the way that you would have her to go. Father, we ask your blessing upon her and upon her family. We thank you and praise you, O oh God, for the gifts that you give us to our servant. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.